Hello guys, today's topic is Unified Payment Interface also called as UPI. First of all, let us see what is UPI. UPI is a fintech means financial technology uh, which allows real-time money transfers. Real-time means it happens quickly within two or three seconds uh, from one bank account to another bank account using smartphones. Okay, It eliminates the use of digital wallets credit or debit cards and physical currency notes. Now, a fun fact, actually it came to existence because we wanted to reduce the circulation of currency notes because currency notes are really costly to print. And besides, uh, they are costly because you have to keep a lot of security features in that. And even after doing that, uh, our good neighbors keep uh, uh, printing the counterfeit currency and they circulate it in our market uh, and our economy uh, is collapsed uh, due to the, or it reduces uh, due to this so um, we always have to be on our toes when currency notes come into picture uh, they are very very vulnerable to counterfeiting but uh, any kind of digital transaction is very difficult to counterfeit and that's the reason why uh, we have come up with upi now upi international is a direct threat to American SWIFT system. Now, what is SWIFT system? SWIFT is an American way uh, in which uh, US dollars can be transferred from one country to another. Let us say that India has to buy oil from Saudi Arabia. So we transfer U US dollars uh, to Saudi Arabia using SWIFT system. So it is just an interbank transfer system, but the two banks have to be uh, across the world you know it's not within the country but across the world um, so very few countries provide this kind of a system and the US uh, system is called as SWIFT and it is the most widely used uh, system of money transfer even India uses it so uh, US many a times weaponizes SWIFT system like in the Ukraine Russia war you must have seen that the first thing that America did was uh, pull Russia out of this SWIFT system so Russia could not sell oil to European countries and accept uh, US dollars directly using the SWIFT system. So what Russia did is uh, Russia said, see, we also have our own system of uh, exchange, but then you will have to adjust as per that system and use that system. Many countries don't use that Russian system of uh, uh, money exchange. Uh, similarly, Indian uh, way of money exchange will become UPI. And uh, many people, you know, many countries nowadays don't use uh, UPI, not not many countries use it, um, and that's the reason why SWIFT is very widely used. And uh, Russia, when it was uh, pulled out of the SWIFT system, it was kind of a embargo uh, levied by the US upon Russia. So it uh, US weaponizes SWIFT system, and UPI can become a benign alternative to SWIFT system. Why benign? Benign because India normally doesn't. Uh, impose embargoes on other countries although india is also one of the biggest countries in the world but even for our neighborhood uh, where small countries are there we never embargoed anyone that uh, no one will do trade with this country or at least indian companies won't do trade with this country we normally don't do that uh, today uh, you you might say that uh, we don't have trade with pakistan but do you know pakistan itself stopped the trade ties with india Pakistan boycotted India uh, when we uh, abrogated Article 370 of our constitution. This was completely our internal matter, but Pakistan had to take an offense and it had to do this. Otherwise, India normally doesn't embargo anyone, doesn't boycott any country uh, with respect to trade. We have trade relationships even with China, which is our greatest adversary. So this should give an uh, impression. And that is why we are a benign choice. Besides, we never pick sides. Uh, we uh, do trade with US as well as China, as well as Russia, as well as Israel, France, everybody. Uh, so we don't uh, pick sides and that's why we are a benign alternative. There is no uh, possibility that we will be uh, pulling some uh, uh, country out of our way of money transfer. And that way of money transfer will be UPI in the future. Uh, so UPI was developed by NPCI. Now remember this name, this name will come very often. NPCI means National Payments Corporation of India. It's a government body. Uh, government has many, many organizations, right, at the central level. So one of those organizations, one of the financial organizations that India has is NPCI. Uh, 
it also introduces sorry it also introduced a first party app called as bheem that is bharat interface for of money uh, to demonstrate the use of upi api see upi is what upi is just an api okay and uh, uh, so api has to be consumed by some uh, application right so uh, instead of uh, private players creating their own applications uh, government also created one application that is called as bheem it was only to demonstrate how to use uh, upi uh, by the way uh, uh, such apps which the government uh, which uh, you know the api producer itself is creating an app so those are called as first party apps for that api okay and if some other third party is uh, creating an app using that api then those are called as third party apps so third party apps also exist like paytm phone pay google pay and many others journey from rtgs to neft to imps to upi this is a very interesting slide i think there should be a complete video just on this slide but i'll try to cover it in short see what happened is rtgs is a very old way of uh, real time communication uh, real time uh, data uh, this uh, money transfer uh, so it was uh, there in the world uh, since 1985 but it came to india in 2000 after 15 years it came to india so what it stands for is real time gross settlement that means uh, suppose uh, the money uh, to be transferred is more than 2 lakh rupees uh, then you can immediately wire transfer it um, instantaneously that means uh, in real time actually they say real time but it's not really real time because first thing is you have to add the beneficiary so this itself will take half a day then uh, transferring it uh, doesn't happen instantly like 2 3 seconds so it doesn't happen like that. it takes a few hours maybe 1 hour 2 hours something like that uh, but uh, it does not happen instantaneously so this uh, word uh, real time has to be taken with a pinch of salt okay so that was rtgs for you so it was only for a uh, value greater than 2 lakh rupees okay now what about uh, the sum of money which is lesser than 2 lakh rupees what about the smaller uh, transfer of money uh, for that uh, india came up with neft there is national electronic funds transfer it was meant for lesser amounts uh, lesser than 2 lakh rupees again beneficiary had to be added and the payment it is said that it is real time but real time actually means um, it will take half an hour to 2 hours something like that uh, now the way uh, it was different from rtgs was that first is uh, this uh, uh, neft is lesser uh, for lesser than 2 lakh rupees that is first difference second difference is uh, neft uh, when you do it uh, it is not done specifically for your transaction all the transactions are accumulated and all of them go in one go uh, in a 30 minutes batch so every 30 minutes they will execute all the neft transactions okay so this is why uh, neft takes minimum 30 minutes and uh, normally it takes uh, uh, i think 2 hours but if you do it late night uh, then you'll probably have to uh, wait for the bank to open uh, normally in my case uh, it normally happens uh, uh, around the morning maybe uh, 8 8:30 9 something like that okay so that is rtgs and neft all this technology already existed in the world we were not creating something new but then uh, uh, let us uh, take care of the dates as well see this is 2000 this is 2005 3 years later a new uh, thing is established which is called as npci npci means national payments commission uh, of india uh, let me go to the yeah correct corporation not commission corporation so uh, it was meant to regulate the atms and peer to merchant payment now what is p2m see one kind of payment is peer to peer also called as person to person means i am sending some money to my friend that is peer to peer or person to person that is p2p model but suppose i am sending money to a merchant that means i am sending money uh, to a shopkeeper or uh, suppose i am a suppose i am a shopkeeper and i am paying money to my vendor uh, or suppose i am i am just a common citizen uh, who is buying petrol from a petrol pump that kind of transactions where one party is merchant 
uh, are called as peer to merchant uh, payments or person to merchant payments in short they are written as p2m payments so nbci uh, was meant to focus only on these two things uh, atms and p2m payments but nbci became one of the most valued central agencies it basically uh, innovated the financial landscape of india and it will come later on so it was established in 2008 just two uh, two years later uh, it came up with something called as imps that is immediate payment system sorry immediate payment service that is imps now imps is different imps is not what already exists in, in the world and we are we copied that technology nothing like that this was a new thing this was a novelty and that is why uh, npci ever since those days only people uh, started recognizing the caliber of uh, npci within 2 years it came up with something revolutionary it did not exist anywhere else in the world uh, people also had alternatives of imps but yes imps is amazing uh, this is what revolutionized india at that time uh it was meant for the payments less than 2 lakh rupees um adding the beneficiary was still required uh, again it said real time uh, settlement was done but uh, um, take it with a pinch of salt because see adding the beneficiary itself took time okay and then you know uh, but yeah this time uh, you know as compared to rtgs and nft it was a little faster i'll tell you why payments were done uh in real time using mobile sim card so the authentication of the uh, person transferring the money and the authentication of the person receiving the money it could be done using mobile and that revolutionized the whole thing and upi if you see uh, uh, the basis or the core or the basic structure of upi is based upon this sim card technology okay so identification of the sender and the receiver has to be done using the sim card of the mobile so this concept first of all it came uh, in imps and then it was carried forward in upi so you can in a in a way you can say imps developed or evolved itself into upi uh, if you compare the two then uh, yeah upi is like way ahead uh, upi is at least 10 to 15 times better than uh, imps but uh, yeah you can say that uh, it this was the inception point where we started innovating and we started coming on uh, mobile based uh, money transactions merchant payments were not allowed and qr code scanning was not allowed as i told you upi is way ahead so here basic basic thing was there uh, merchant payments were not allowed qr code was not allowed now upi came in 2016 so after 6 years uh, upi came okay and uh, uh, upi payments came for lesser than 1 lakh rupees so here the uh, maximum limit was 2 lakh rupees here it is even lesser uh, it was 1 lakh rupees i think they have increased it now uh, do check what is the current limit of upi adding beneficiary was not needed and uh, that increased the uh, utility of upi uh, payments were done using virtual id called as upi id merchant payments and qr code scanning were allowed and no charges were levied okay so the sender does not have to give charges for upi and the receiver also does not have to pay charges what is this charges matter i'll tell you um, if you uh, see before upi there were money uh, the card scanning machines uh, in every shop okay so uh, card scanning machines uh, had that machine right so that machine was a rented machine its rental had to be paid by the shopkeeper okay and that's why it discouraged uh, the shopkeepers to you know uh, uh, get uh, take card payments they would normally love to take cash payments okay besides per unit money transferred there was some charge levied so one is the rental of the machine another is how much money you got through that machine uh, some cut had to be given to the bank now all these uh, actually worked against digitization of india because people would normally say okay give me in cash you know at least i'll get all the money and i don't have to uh, go through all this pain but in upi what the government uh, did was uh, upi said uh, i mean government said that you know if you pay by upi uh, the sender doesn't have to pay anything uh, receiver also doesn't have to pay anything 
it is just great it is digital we are happy that you are going digital we are happy with this also okay and in fact if you remember when upi came for the first time uh, on the petrol pumps especially the government petrol pumps means hindustan petroleum and indian oil uh, they uh, started giving 2 rupees uh, discount also on uh, per liter petrol something like that so if you paid using upi uh, then uh, you know your uh, uh, you used to get 2 rupees extra per per liter of petrol something like that Uh, so first thing it was not taking it was not charging anyone second thing it was even uh, giving some um, uh, you know perks uh, maybe to the uh, sender and that's why uh, it spread like uh, wildfire and this is how uh, the country is using upi so much today now this slide the way i explain to you that okay what should be done for less than 2 lakhs then this came that came so basically uh, i derived some of this content from uh, ca rahul malodia and uh, pardon me if my way of talking was also uh, influenced uh, by him i follow him uh, so before you uh, uh, you know uh, put a claim of you know plagiarism i am myself saying that yeah i, I like this guy and uh, i cannot help but you know uh, sometimes get inspired the the way he talks it's really fantastic interoperability this is another feature of uh, a upi which is very very important uh, that suppose i have a paytm account and i want to transfer money to my friend who is using google pay uh, then i can still do it so it is interoperable api is the same no matter which application is using it api is still going to be the same so basically what is needed is uh, upi id is given to the sender as well as to the receiver so whenever an upi app is going to transfer money see the upi app sits in the mobile of the sender okay so that app in that app the sender has already registered uh, their bank account and that's why sender's upi id is known to the upi application okay then Uh, how much money is to be transferred either the sender will uh, write it or uh, in the qr code of the uh, receiver uh, that amount will be there so that is also fine and the third thing that is required is uh, the upi id of the receiver so uh, previously we if we used to uh, give uh, we used to type in the upi id of the uh, receiver but nowadays qr code is there so the qr code has this information that what is the upi id of this person we just scan it okay so that is very easy so upi application just requires these three things uh, upi id of the sender then the amount to be transferred and uh, the upi id of the receiver okay uh, now what is a upi application upi application means any any application in which uh, you can use this upi api to you know transfer the money uh, so anybody cannot make that application for making that application there are two conditions first thing you have to be associated with a bank you have to partner with a bank second thing is you have to obtain a license from npci okay national payments uh, commission of commission or corporation of india so you have to take their license only then will you be able to make an application for uh, a, a upi uh, so paytm tez uh, uh, now called as google pay uh, phone pay these are all uh, your upi applications okay and just like these these are third party applications uh, there was a, a first party application also called bheem which was launched by uh, npci itself okay now how do citizens register to the upi so whenever a citizen downloads and installs uh, a upi application on their phone uh, then in in that application uh, they are able to add their bank account okay and uh, when they add their bank account they get a upi id okay so this is how citizens register to the upi okay this is how we got our upi id after that what happens means basically it's not related to the bank account also but uh, it is a unique id given to every uh, citizen uh, who is identified using our phone number right so my upi id for example is my mobile number at the rate upi okay now uh all the other applications also have different different upi ids so uh, for my mob, uh, for my mobile number uh, at the rate uh, paytm so that is a upi id when i am using paytm uh, 
then at the rate uh, OK axis, that is when I'm using UPI of uh, Axis Bank's, uh, you know, uh, this UPI app. Okay, so this this is how uh, UPI IDs are created for you. Then the third thing is uh, how are they interoperable? So that is that is the title of the topic, right? So let us say that uh, I'm having mobile number at the rate uh, Paytm, and my friend is having mobile number uh, at the rate OK Access. Uh, then also I can send the money to them. Okay, uh, so that means uh, both of us don't have to have uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, UPI ID having the same uh, suffix. It's not required. Uh, I can have a I, I can be using an application uh, a, a UPI application of Paytm and uh, the person might be using UPI application of Access Bank, uh, but still I can transfer the money because the uh, underlying uh, uh, API is the same. No matter which application uses the API, API is the same. Okay, so this is called as interoperability, and that is a basic reason why uh, UPI is so famous now. Yeah, there is just a side note that previously UPI was only for peer-to-peer -peer communication, uh, means money transfer, but now uh, it is also open for peer-to-merchant um, payments. Some important dates are given, like uh, in April uh, 2016, UPI was launched. Demonetization happened way in November. Okay, so before that, uh, phone pay had come. Phone pay was always UPI based. Okay, unlike Paytm. Paytm is a very old application. Uh, it existed in 2010 also. So six years before uh, uh, this uh, UPI, uh, Paytm existed. But at that time, it had wallet. Okay, it did not use uh, uh, UPI and. Uh, uh, phone pay was the first major UPI application that came into the market and that's why even today phone, phone pay has the biggest share of the market a UPI market okay then even uh, Bheem app came a few months later to phone pay so phone pay think about it how proactive this company was it was a private company as soon as the government launched UPI it launched their own application they launched their own application you know phone pay launched their own application uh, based on that api okay no one was believing in upi at that time and uh, opposition leaders were saying uh, that you know upi will never become successful big big leaders i mean i think chidambaram also said this who was former who is our former uh, uh, finance minister he even he said that oh uh, will people uh, get the internet how is it possible uh, you are thinking too ahead of your time and today you see uh, every shopkeeper has uh, UPI, every panwala has UPI, chaiwala has UPI, even beggars have UPI. I have paid arms on UPI once. So everybody has UPI today. And uh, yeah, uh, I did not mention the date of Geo launch, but even Geo was launched uh, during the same time. That's why uh, this uh, internet revolution also happened in our country due to Geo. Uh, everybody got data in their hands, I mean, internet in their hands, and that revolutionized our financial landscape. Okay, so three things were, it, were at play. One is UPI was launched, another is demonetization happened, so there was a need for that UPI. Third thing, we could do it because there was a lot of free internet that people had. Okay, so these three reasons came together, and that's why UPI became an instant hit in India. Uh, you will notice that Tays. Uh, came in 2017. UPI got launched in 16 itself. Phone pay was already working. Bheem also came after that. Eight months after Bheem was launched, Tez came into the market. And then Tez uh, was renamed to uh, Google Pay. Okay. Uh, the Google Pay also came like one year later to that, Tez was renamed to Google Pay. So think about it. Google was such a late uh, player, you can say, in the UPI market. Uh, Paytm started using uh, UPI in 2018. Paytm was also a late mover. Uh, Paytm launched Paytm for business app. See, Paytm was a late mover, but uh, uh, it brought in a lot of innovation in the UPI landscape. Uh, what it did is uh, uh, it launched uh, those devices which used to give audios that, you know, so uh, rupee Paytm par prapt hue. So that gave uh, an impetus to the acceptance of uh, uh, UPI, especially in uh, vendors, especially in shopkeepers, 
uh, because you know uh, they do not want to keep checking on the mobile for every transaction it should it should come on the audio it it works better okay so that is that was revolutionary uh, paytm did that uh, another thing paytm did was it gave the qr codes okay and those qr codes uh, then everybody started giving but paytm i saw the qr code of paytm the first uh, so these two things really revolutionized our shopkeeping or you know purchasing experience from the shops and then uh, in uh, 2018 itself uh, upi2 was launched with four new features then auto pay or upi mandate also came after two years means in 2020 and after three years means in 2023 the last year uh, four new features were also added but when these first four features were added it was called as upi2 but when these last four features were added it was not called upi3 it is still being called as upi2 okay now upi2 the first four features which came uh, let us discuss them in short uh, signed intent and qr so qr there was uh, now qr code started coming so that qr code had the upi id of the merchant so every shopkeeper started keeping this uh, QR code. Okay, so it, it went so easy. I mean, it, it became so easy for the, uh, you know, uh, shopkeeper as well as common citizens. So common citizen just has, had to, you know, scan it using any UPI app of his choice and uh, uh, they could make the payment. Because my UPI ID is already known to the UPI app. The money to be transferred, I will in, in, insert it and uh, i only needed the upi id of the uh, shopkeeper so instead of uh, taking his number at the rate upi instead of typing it i can just scan uh, the qr code so it became easier for everyone it became foolproof because i did not make mistakes in uh, you know typing uh, their uh, upi id and it was secure 100 percent secure okay uh, the main thing about upi is that it is absolutely secure and that's the basic reason why it is spreading so much second feature was invoicing so now instead of me scanning that particular qr uh, uh, the shopkeeper could also generate a qr on their uh, upi app and there the shopkeeper could even uh, mention the amount to be transferred okay so I didn't have to type in that amount also. Even that work the shopkeeper can do for me. And they will give me the QR. I'll scan the QR. After scanning the QR, it is an invoice. Invoice means uh, how much money is to be paid. So invoice is to be given before the payment. Okay. So here I have all the details now that this much money has to be transferred to so and so person. Should I go ahead? Okay. So that is your invoice and then you said okay and it got sent. So this is called as invoicing. So invoicing came for the first time. Then the third feature was one time mandate. One time mandate means you could pre-authorize a payment uh, which will happen someday in the future. Okay. For example, if I book a cab. So as soon as uh, the cab wala comes, uh, I will scan their QR code and uh, or maybe they'll generate an invoice for me and I will just... Uh, you know, uh, do a one-time mandate, okay, means what, what, uh, how it will happen, I'll tell you, see, one-time mandate basically means the cab wala will send me a mandate, okay, send me an invoice, now, after I reach my destination, I'll go there and I'll, uh, uh, in my app, I'll go to that mandate, I'll say, okay, go ahead and make the payment, okay, otherwise, alternatively, I can even, uh, you know, I don't know how it is done, but uh, actually on the official website, it is said uh, that you pre-authorize that payment and the payment will happen on the day on which that transaction happens. Um, uh, the example that was given was that suppose you order some goods and uh, uh, you pre-approve that payment that, yeah, I'll be paying you 1 lakh rupees uh, or maybe 90,000 rupees. But, uh, uh, you know, the payment will be done not today but two days later because you'll be giving me the goods after two days okay so when you give me the goods i'll make the payment so that example was given for uh, one time mandate go to the official website it's a must read kind of a website this is the official website of bheem upi the bheem app that you saw 
overdraft facilities of both things so what is overdraft overdraft means uh, overdrawing the money withdrawing the money means whatever money is there in your bank account withdrawing it means giving it uh, taking it out but overdrawing that money means uh, you have only 50000 in your bank account and uh, you need to spend 60000 so that is called as overdraft facility you can spend a little more extra but uh, why do banks allow you to do that uh, banks will have to give some money uh, money to you from their pocket right so why will bank allow this bank allows it because it charges overdraft fees to you okay so now while returning you won't be returning that 10000 only you will be giving maybe 10000 10 rupees so the 10 rupees is what it is the overdraft fees now you just scale it up to the number of users that might be using the overdraft facility and the number of uh, uh, you know the amount of uh, money that is coming up scale it up you will see crores of rupees coming to the bank just by overdraft facility okay so that's uh, this overdraft facility existed but only in the bank accounts upi did not allow you to do that upi said see if the money is there in the bank i'll transfer it and i'll transfer it immediately that's it i don't care whether your bank did not have the money and you wanted to spend more speak to your bank that's not I, we are not going to allow it but then uh, with upi 2 they said okay overdraft facility will also be allowed if your bank account allows overdraft then we will also allow it okay so that overdraft communication has to be done right uh, the bank account uh, has to be checked and accordingly upi has to change its rules the upi application has to change its rules it is just to say that okay uh, this much is the overdraft limit and the person is willing to spend uh, money which is extra Uh, only by this much so okay uh, we we can allow it so that kind of a setting also came in this api then if your bank account allowed uh, overdraft then only it could be implemented using upi payments okay. now what is upi auto pay it is also called as upi mandate so uh, it is like suppose you take a subscription on netflix then for the first time you say okay it is 200 rupees per month for the first month you pay the 200 rupees but while paying there is a small check box which says uh, auto pay or upi mandate uh, so if you check it it is by default checked so what it means is the next month when uh, the uh, payment is due uh, netflix doesn't even ask you netflix automatically gets that payment using your upi app because in your upi app in mandate uh, that a uh, mandate is active that every month you have to give 200 rupees to netflix okay so those are called as upi mandates also called as upi auto pay the feature is called as upi auto pay but it is achieved using upi mandates so it, it can be used uh, they can be used interchangeably here if you see in your uh, upi app you will see mandates here these are pending mandates and active mandate pending mandates means uh, those mandates Uh, which the merchant has uh, given to you but you haven't approved them like let us say uh, netflix uh, gave you the mandate but you did not approve it it does not happen in case of netflix as soon as you make the first payment it considers it to be approved okay so this is how uh, upi mandate also called as upi auto pay can be used for further guidance you can go to this source four new features were uh, added in september 2023 so what are these features so these are features which are lesser known uh, very few people know about it but still there are many youtubers who made uh, videos on this so credit line on upi what this means is uh, upi can be used to pay your emi or uh, emi or emi is always on a loan so home loan personal loan uh, car loan uh, education loan on all these types of loans uh, there is an emi okay so emi can also be paid using uh, upi so how will it be done there will be a upi mandate okay uh, that every month i have to pay uh, rupees uh, 40000 uh, for my home loan to so and so bank okay then uh, another uh, you know thing that comes under credit line on upi is your insurances your uh, term insurance uh, health insurance 
your uh, you know um, uh, etc i mean say any kind of your vehicle insurance etc all these insurances require you to pay some monthly premium that premium can also be done using upi mandate third thing uh, that comes over here is systematic investment plan sip or maybe mutual fund something like that so for all these uh, policies means various policies so every policy also requires you to pay some premium every month right uh, if it is a monthly plan or if it is a quarterly plan then every quarter so as per that frequency upi mandates can be set okay now these upi mandates will be set by the bank which is giving you that loan or insurance or sip okay how will it be done i'll give an example let us say uh, icici bank has a upi application right so in that application itself you will be seeing a lot of ads that oh your home loan is ready it is auto sanctioned do you want a home loan of so and so lakh rupees suppose if you say yes i want and then it will ask you a few questions that you know whatever i mean do you approve of all these things you say yes and you or uh, you know get it because it is auto approved so much of an approval is not needed because the bank itself knows that every month you are getting this much of salary i know everything about you yaar i can sanction that loan so it's often auto approved if you agree to all those things it will set a upi mandate for you that every month you will be paying 40000 rupees let us say you take a uh, 40 lakh rupees loan then mostly there uh, the emi comes out to 40 lakh uh, 40000 rupees per month so every month 40000 rupees has to be paid uh, from your salary account to the uh, whichever bank it was i think icici is it right icici banks account uh, now uh, you might ask that what if i go <laughs> to the upi mandates and if i delete that mandate then what will happen so believe me <laughs> i haven't seen this feature by the way but uh, i think to the best of my knowledge and belief these upi mandates will be non cancelable you won't be able to cancel it otherwise you have to speak to the bank and say that see you know i i don't want this uh, loan any more or you know i want to foreclose the loan so you know please change the upi mandate or they'll change it automatically so bank will change it you won't be able to change it otherwise you know it will be very difficult to track things so i think to the best of my knowledge and belief uh, these upi mandates will be non cancelable still if you know something let me know in the comment section second thing that came was hello upi so it was like okay google so you could talk to the upi app uh, so actually you are not talking to the upi app you are talking to the upi api okay which the government has made so it is going to work exactly the same no matter which upi app you are using so in paytm also it will work the same in phone pay also it will work the same okay this is the beauty of uh you know having the upi api third thing that came is upi litex so upi lite already existed but with upi litex uh it allowed you to make transactions without internet how is it done so it is done using near field communication that is nfc sender and receiver should both have nfcs on their phones okay suppose i am willing to send some 2000 rupees Uh, to one of my friends both of us have high end mobiles so my phone also has nfc his phone also has nfc okay then what will happen uh, when you bring the two phones together uh, their upi ids and transaction account will be exchanged over the nfc to enable the transaction see for upi transaction to happen what are the three things that we require sender's upi id tra uh, transaction amount and receivers upi id so this receivers upi id can be received you over nfc also no it's not a big deal you don't have to just scan the qr instead of scanning the qr you are getting it through nfc okay you just need the upi id it is getting transferred using nfc so uh, technically speaking uh, upi transaction should be possible and yes it is possible in this 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 feature is called as upi litex So UPI Litex will use NFC to initiate the payment, but the settlement will happen when the payer and the payee's phones connect to the internet. Ah, now this is very important. See, near field communication will only give you the UPI ID. Okay, 
but for making the payment the upi has the upi api has to be called okay and then that will happen so for calling the api you need the internet right so your upi application will only save that upi id and it will initialize the payment okay payment is initialized now whenever both of you get into the network internet you will see that oh my bank account got uh, 500 rupees or 2000 rupees deducted and uh, uh, that your friend will see that uh, yeah my bank account has got 2000 rupees uh, credited to it okay so all these things will happen when you get into the internet uh, but without internet you will at least be able to initiate the payment okay the fourth thing that came is upi tap and pay so upi tap and pay also uses nfc but it requires internet okay so it requires nfc as well as internet so this is mostly useful uh, in um, you know tap and pay and exit that kind of a model uh, so uh, let us say uh, that uh, you have uh, 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 suppose a metro station so uh, on a metro station uh, you have to you know pay uh, make the payment so how will you do that or maybe let us say in a mall that kind of a facility so there often tap and pay is allowed so now you can tap a uh, tap your phone having that upi application also and you can make the payment so this is also possible but previously what used to happen is uh, we had to tap the credit card and then the payment used to happen instead of credit card and now the government says you can tap your phone also if it has the upi application um, then this tap and pay will work okay so this is how it is for more reading of course you can go to this uh, website this is not a government website but yeah it's very well written now what is the official website of npci actually this is not for upi it is for npci let me just uh, change the slide okay so it is npci official website it is very very well made website so please go through it uh, see it will uh, tell you upi rupee it will tell you about everything and it will also say that you know inside upi there are these many topics it treats upi like a financial product so product overview and this is amazing yeah. this this npci is really working very well uh, the official website is amazing uh, has tons of help on every topic then next thing is uh, uh, what are the leading upi apps so currently 46.4% uh, of the market share is captured only by phone pay and phone pay was innovative right from the beginning it was the very first uh, upi based payment uh, application uh, that came into indian market and what indian market is upi is new to the entire world so in the world you can say this is the first uh, upi application that came in the world okay uh, then uh, see uh, google pay also has only 34.4 percent market share and then Paytm has even lesser. Paytm has just 15.4% of the market share. Amazon Pay, let's just look at it. Amazon Pay is stuck at 1.5%. WhatsApp, WhatsApp payment is of Adani. Uh, sorry, Ambani. Ambani, Ambani's share is just 0.05%. And this others, uh, this slice is of, uh, you know, you can say 2.15%. Uh, this con uh, contains everything else like uh, you know your uh, what all uh, mobiquick uh, and then uh, you know this icici banks uh, uh, application or ok access access banks application all those applications make uh, together also they make less than 2.5 uh, 2.15% of the pie so here you will realize that you know phone pay how big phone pay is in india you will come to know from this slide which states are leading in the uh, upi revolution here i will be very proud uh, because maharashtra is my state and uh, very proudly i can say that my state is uh, leading uh, the upi uh, transactions again telangana is also leading and karnataka is also leading kudos to all these three states few states like gujarat a few states are an exception I, I did not understand why gujarat is so back uh, left behind kerala is even behind as even more behind as compared to uh, gujarat 
Goa is almost negligible. Okay, means I think I think Goa is even behind uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, and that kind of states. You know, can you imagine? I mean, Goa is more accessible as compared to let us say Himachal Pradesh. It has, it has so much of hilly terrain and this and that. And here it is pretty much accessible. There there are uh, international tourists, and still I I don't know why Goa is left so behind. I think the Goans have to uh, work harder on UPI. UPI is a great tech guys. Start using it. Gujaratis, I mean, it is your prime minister. Yeah, uh, it's a Gujarati prime minister. It is his brain, uh, not brainchild. It's brainchild of Raghuram Rajan, by the way, <laughs> who is now removed by Modi Sarkar. But uh, you know, Modi ji favored the UPI so much, and you yourself are not following it. So. Again, a few states are really good. Uh, Rajasthan, UP, UP under Yogi Ji is really performing well. So, uh, but this is not a wonder. Delhi, Delhi is doing good. Uh, so, this is how it is. So, kudos to all those who are doing good. Uh, rising popularity of UPI in Bharat. So, as you can see, uh, two years after inception, it was just over here. And then it started growing. So here, what you should really see is it is not growing linearly. It is growing logarithmically. So that means uh, it is growing geometrically. It means it, it's it's rising. It's skyrocketing. You can say. So after this, it will go even higher. So this is a very good graph, and uh, it is not coinciding with uh, COVID alone. It's not just that. COVID has COVID was the only thing which, which was responsible for this. No, see, COVID ended almost ended uh, around uh, 2020, right? So what after that? See here from from this time also it kept on rising, okay, and uh, the steepness kept on growing only, okay, it did not reduce. Uh, rather, you can say here it is less, but here it is more. So it is not just about COVID. It is not just about uh, you know. I would I don't want to touch the currency notes actually touching the currency notes uh, was not spreading virus so much as it was advertised um, but uh, uh, yeah uh, that could be a, uh, one of the reasons but uh, uh, you know as this graph so shows it's not just the COVID time which uh, promoted UPI uh, in fact people started UPI even more after the COVID uh, pandemic was over because then uh, you know, uh, uh, they started going out, right? When you go out, you purchase more things. You uh, do more, more transactions when you are outside. When you are inside the home, you are only watching Netflix. <laughs> so, Netflix transaction might happen, but otherwise other transactions don't usually happen at home, if you are at home. But if you are outside, you will watch a movie. While watching movie, you will buy popcorn. Uh, there will be parking tickets, this, that. So, this is how you keep on purchasing more things if you go outside the home okay the next thing is uh, rising popularity of upi in bharat so as of 2022 upi's volume volume means what there are two things volume and value Va volume means number of transactions value means how much money was transacted so volume wise means number of transactions wise 64 percent of the transactions in 2022 were done using upi and all the other forms like credit card, debit card and all others, uh, they made only this much pie. You know, can you imagine? So it is almost 36%. So only 36 and here it is 64%. Okay, so this is why uh, UPI is uh, very, very famous now in India. Then value wise, if you see how much uh, money was transacted. So here the value is only 50%. Why is it less? Uh, it is not 64 percent why because why do you use upi you use it for transactions of lesser than one lakh rupees or now if the limit must have increased a bit but overall you do it for small transactions you are not even allowed to make transactions of let's say 5 lakh 10 lakh rupees that's why the value of transactions will always be lesser but the number of transactions will be more like you will be buying vegetable you will be buying uh, milk uh, you will be going to shops, you will be going to malls, um, at all these places you will be using UPI. But the amount transacted might be less. If you have to pay the builder, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, the whatever amount we say, no, uh, so some lakh rupees, 10 lakh rupees have to be paid while buying a flat uh, in cash. 
uh, and means of course you pay by check and uh, then the rest of it is sanctioned as per the loan so uh, down payment so the down payment 10 lakh rupees you will never do it using upi right because upi does not allow such big chunks of money to be transferred uh, so that will happen using check right and that is why uh, you know uh, all the other methods uh, will come into play so that's that's why here value wise it is less okay now in bharat uh, p2m volume is more than p2p volume so um, uh, peer to merchant volume is more than peer to peer volume so here peer to peer volume is shown in blue and peer to merchant volume is shown in red so peer to peer number of uh, peer to merchant number of transactions are more that means uh, you would normally purchase things from a uh, you know shopkeeper right from a mall uh, from a pan wala from a uh, uh, thela wala koi bhi uh, kulcha wala pani puri wala chai wala right so you are making transactions with a merchant one of the parties is a merchant that's why these transactions are more as opposed to that uh, transactions with your friends family you know you don't transfer money to each other normally you don't do it like for example uh, if we go to a restaurant together normally i'll pay right or you will pay somebody or someone has to pay you don't usually you know send money to each other and then one person pays that usually doesn't happen normally what people do is okay this time i'll pay next time you pay this is how things go that's why peer to peer transactions are usually lesser as compared to peer to merchant transactions so this is volume that is number of transactions but if you see value then the scenario reverses the value of money sent within peers is more and volume value volume of money sent to the merchant is less i'll tell you why suppose i have to send money to my dad so i'll normally send 5000 rupees 2000 rupees something like that right but if i have to pay money for my vegetables it might be just 50 rupees 100 rupees so compare it uh, with the money that i sent to my dad or the money that i received from my dad okay so within peers uh, we normally have bigger transactions uh, on upi but uh, with the merchants usually you don't require to uh, uh, send so much of money to the merchants so that's why this pi is lesser so these are just interesting uh, facts that i wanted to give you uh, what is the present statistics of UPI and what are the targets for the future? So, as of the month March 2024, that means last month, the total transaction volume was 13.5 thousand and total value of transactions was 19 lakh 78 thousand, means almost 19 lakhs, almost 20 lakh uh, crore Indian rupees within a single month 20 lakh crore rupees were transacted can you imagine 20 lakh crores it's not just one crore 20 lakh crores that much money was transferred over upi in just one month and you already know that the transactions are lesser than one lakh rupees so you can imagine the amount of transaction that the amount of uh, you know uh, a number of transactions so he, here you you will see that yeah it is not 13.5 uh, thousand it is 13.5 thousand millions these many transactions happened in a single month okay and how many of them were p2p and p2m that they are also given so of course uh, uh, at one place volume is more and uh, this uh, value uh, value is more uh, this guy is uh, Mr. Dilip Azbe. Uh, many of you must have seen him on various uh, YouTube channels, various news channels. Uh, now, he is the NPCI CEO. Okay. And he has often said this in his interviews that uh, we have very tall targets for 20, uh, 2030. And what we are thinking is on the credit side, the number of users will grow by 10 times on the credit side means what uh, i told you now that there is a credit line being given okay so emis can be given using upi this credit line on upi right so emis can be given 
your uh, policy premiums can be given that kind of things so that market will grow so much that the number of users who are who have subscribed to the credit side will grow by 10x obviously it will grow because nothing like that was existing until uh, i think whenever that was launched so definitely it has a huge potential then 2 billion upi transactions per day should happen by uh, 2030 the next thing is uh, at least 50 percent of the top 30 markets or countries will be using upi in 2030 by 2030 okay so that will be great that means many countries are going to follow upi in the future that's what mr dilip aspe thinks how many countries follow it at the moment so this is a uh, this is a picture that you will find on many news articles, many news videos, you will see this. Uh, I took it from NDTV. Uh, so here it shows France, UAE, Mauritius, uh, Sri Lanka. This Our neighbors are always there. Uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, uh, Singapore. Singapore showed, uh, shows, now. normally Singapore nowadays shows a lot of interest in India. Uh, it showed a lot of interest in India during COVID as well. UAE has become one of our best friends. France has become our newly best friend. France had, has always been helping India even during sanctions, uh, US sanctions. Uh, but uh, yeah, now the friendship has really deepened a lot. So all these are our friends. Okay. All these are basically our friends. Uh, Bhutan is our best friend ever since. Even during Congress time also it was friends. Nepal was always our friend. Sri Lanka was okay, okay kind of a friend. Uh, Mauritius is a new one. Other, otherwise, all these are our friends only. But do you know, if you search Google and if you say that, you know, countries using UPI in the current year, then you will get so many more countries. So there are how many countries? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 into 3, 18 into 18 plus 1 means 19 countries are given uh, who are using UPI. So I don't uh, think all of them are using UPI. But uh, yeah, this is the query I gave. See, many countries normally give a uh, show interest into it. So I'm not sure, take it with a pinch of salt. But as you can see, this is just a direct screenshot of Google. Uh, you can search on Google and you will get these sources uh, from, from sources across the web. Okay. So 19 countries. Now, uh, how to activate UPI International on phone pay? Now, let us see. Uh, let us say that you want to go abroad and you want to go to France, let us say, and you want to go on the Eiffel Tower and use the UPI uh, to make the payment for ticket, something like that. If you want to do, then um, what should you do? Suppose you are using phone pay, then uh, you know you open your app, go to the home screen, go to your profile picture, go to the settings, uh, select UPI International, then uh, click activate uh, next to the desired bank account and enter your UPI pin. This is how you uh, use UPI International on phone pay. Similarly, if you have any other um, UPI app, then also procedure will be nearly the same. Go to the payment settings and select UPI International and then select whichever bank uh, you have. Just click the activate button. This is how it is. Why will you need this? Yeah, that is that is very important for you to know. See, previously what used to happen is, if someone went from India to US, then uh, uh, they would carry a card, American Express card. Okay, it was a credit card. So uh, not credit, also it was debit card only. I'm sorry, uh, debit card, but it was a plastic currency. It was card. So. I had to uh, put some money into that card. So how will I put it? I'll put Indian rupees into the card. So it, before getting transferred to the car, it will be converted to US dollars and US dollars were put into the card. Okay. And then in America, I would be uh, swiping that card everywhere uh, to make small, small transactions. Okay. And while coming back, let us say that some thousand rupees are still there in the card. Then what will happen for those thousand rupees? I won't be using that card ever again, right? I, I just went uh, for three months uh, 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 for the company visit, something like that. So after three months, what do I do with that US dollars? So uh, that money was transferred into uh, uh, INR and I got it back. But during the transfer of INR into USD and from USD to INR, both these times, 
बैंक यूज टू प्ले गुगली बैंक यूज टू मेक द कन्वर्जन इन फेवर ऑफ द बैंक सो वेन आई वॉन्टेड टू पुट मनी इन टू द कार्ड इट सेड ओके आई पुट अ लिटिल लेसर मनी ओके एंड वेन आई वॉन्टेड टू विदड्रॉ द मनी फ्रॉम द कार्ड देन द बैंक वुड स्टिल से ओ आई गिव यू सम लेसर मनी सो एवरी टाइम I got the short end of the stick, and the bank always used to get the longer end because bank had a monopoly. Basically, this is the only reason, and this was a problem with all the uh, people who used to go to the US and all. But if US starts using UPI, US will never do it, by the way, because it is against its financial interests. But uh, uh, if any other country, let us say France, starts using UPI altogether, not just in uh, Eiffel Tower, but everywhere in France, suppose they start using UPI. then what will happen then uh, i just have to uh, you know i'm already using a upi app i just have to uh, select uh, upi international and i can use it right uh, it is so simple for me i don't have to buy a plastic currency i don't have to put money into it conversion rate this that nothing like that uh, is needed upi app itself will convert the money whatever suppose i need to spend there 2 dollars instead of 2 dollars i'll be spending 160 indian rupees right so from my indian bank 160 rupees are getting deducted and from uh, to that uh, uh, foreign bank whichever is the merchant over there he will be getting 2 dollars okay this is how uh, transactions will happen okay and uh, uh, for this what happens is this is one more thing interesting thing um, india basically free of cost sets up that upi infrastructure in the countries for example here nepal if nepal wants to follow uh upi then npci will send their uh, uh, intelligent people and they'll sp speak with their central bank and everything and they will set up all the financial infrastructure that is required for upi we do it we charge for it but our model is no profit no loss okay so we are not exorbitantly charging those countries it is almost free for them right whatever infrastructure was developed for that we are charging money but Uh, we are not charging them ex, uh, too much uh, had it been an american company then it would have uh, heavily charged them but we charge them extremely less we charge them only as much as our expenses happened whatever expenses we incurred we just ask them to pay it off that's it no profit no loss upi entirely this npcl uh, npci it actually functions on a no profit no loss only even in india it is doing on no profit no loss it is not getting it is not asking you for money neither is it asking the merchants for the money okay and this is what is skyrocketing upi because all these countries uh, they feel that okay yaar it is a new model of uh, transaction it is very easy uh, their population their uh, citizens are also pressurizing them that oh okay, india has come up with such a nice thing why don't you adopt and then Uh, if they adopt then uh, they don't have to pay much they have to pay very minimal so that's why uh, all these countries are coming up uh, in favor of upi okay uh, now let us see where is upi or where is india with respect to digital payments so in 2024 india ranks the highest in the world with respect to upi uh, with respect to digital payments okay now digital payments means every payment even bank uh, uh, bank website if if you transfer money using bank website then also it is digital payment so digital doesn't mean uh, just upi digital even means you, even if you card swipe then also it is digital payment so anything that does not involve currency notes is called as digital payment so here if you see china china leads the entire world in digital payments but india india is five times china in digital payments okay so you should feel proud of our country many people will tell you that your your country doesn't have this your country doesn't have it. tell them where are you with respect to digital payments look at america where is it it is not even one tenth as compared to what india is this slide already gives you an idea that we are leading the digital uh, digital payments right but the next slide will tell you that all this is only and only during modi sarkar during congress regime we were pathetic we were even behind china so that's why i'm giving this uh, next uh, slide see 2020 uh, 2013 means one year before modi came 
India's digital payments were one third, almost one third, or lesser than one third, uh, those of China. Okay, now we are five times uh, the Chinese digital payment. So that means three into five means fifteen times we have uh, surpassed. Uh, uh, means Modi's performance is fifteen times as compared to Manmohan's performance, and Manmohan had been the finance minister of India as well. So that's why Modi ji says that you know Harvard versus hard work. There is a difference. So usually, if you uh, work hard for something, then the universe conspires to bring it to you. That is what is really true. Modi is willing to do something for the country. Manmohan, I don't know whether he wanted to do or he was not allowed to do whatever, but uh, his speed was really less. Especially uh, during the last few years, uh, like. Uh, uh, 2012-13, uh, there was absolute policy paralysis of the government. Government didn't do anything uh, because uh, continuously uh, some uh, scams used to come, or there there were some some uh, bad act, bad things ha were happening in India. So the government was just in the defensive mode. It was not taking any decisions, and compared to that, Modi takes a decision almost every month. There is a big decision that Modi takes, and uh, there is a big news. Uh, and uh, see the progress of Modi on digital payments, on uh, infrastructure development like uh, roads, railways. This is phenomenal. I'll make more videos on roads and railways as well. Uh, this is a very old chart. I do not know when this chart was taken, which year. Uh, this is the source you go and check. Uh, but uh, what I meant to say is, see, uh, who is leading in the digital payments? India, China, South Korea, Thailand, all these are what? All these are Asian countries. And that's why this decade uh, is said to be the Asian, or this century itself is being called as the Asian century because Asian giants uh, like India, uh, China, South Korea, Japan, Singapore, all these are taking up the leadership role. And these are all the sources which made this video possible. Uh, if you have any doubts, do shoot in the comment section. If you have more knowledge to share with people, then also send it uh, to everyone using the uh, comment section. Until next time, Jai Shri Ram.